Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, and greetings to uh, everyone. I just want to give you an overview of what the project uh, you know, is all about, what we intend to uh, achieve also by you know the end of today. Uh, if you look at your uh, one of your flyers here. Um, you know, the event objectives, I think, have been uh, stated there. Uh, this is the first workshop uh, of raising awareness about the project. Uh, we're trying to build a community, um, you know, around the uh, you know, research you know, infrastructure. And also, as the previous presentation has just given us, you know, some lessons experiences from uh, uh, Europe and also from the GSO and there is also an OECD uh, Global Science Forum which has also done some, some work on, on, on global research infrastructure. So it would be important to you know, uh, take cognizance of, of those uh, experiences. But also we're going to unveil uh, some of our early findings. Uh, because this project started in April already, so we are into the ninth month of the project. So we'll also want to share with you uh, some of our early findings on uh, doing the analysis of uh, research infrastructure in Africa. Um, but also, even more important is to, you know, uh, form partnerships with you and, and create synergies uh, with similar. Uh, you know, initiatives in this space. Uh, but also to create a platform, you know, for policy dialogue uh, on, 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 on research infrastructure so that uh, we can, um, you know, hopefully you know, influence, you know, uh, you know, future programs and policies, uh, you know, in this area. So just to give you a bit of a background on the project, um, you know, the main objective of the project you know, is to promote you know, these partnerships uh, between Africa and Europe on, on research infrastructure across all fields. And the project duration is uh, two years and it's funded to the tune of about 450,000 uh, euros. And it's an FP7 support and coordination action um, project. And the nature of uh, you know, activities of a project like this, you know, we do studies, workshops, conferences, networking, uh, policy development and dialogue, and of course, you know, enhancing uh, international cooperation. And, and the focus really is uh, on large research infrastructure, or at least the research infrastructures of global interests, um, as opposed to just looking at a you know, small microscope in, in a laboratory. So it, it's really about you know, those kind of uh, categories that uh, Professor Leon has already st stated. Uh, let me just say up front that uh, you know, like any other FP7 project, you know, there was a call for proposals, and uh, therefore these are the partners that were part, you know, became part of this project through that process. So it is not uh, in any way was in, it was not intended to exclude, you know, other partners that you may not see here, and and and. Uh, you know, we, we, we're trying to, you know, be very inclusive, you know, of the broader, you know, stakeholders, you know, in this community to ensure that, you know, it is uh, relevant. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, there is eight consortium partners uh, split equally uh, between Africa and Europe. And, uh, and it's kind of, it's kind of like a mix of you know policy makers. Uh, we've got also
also the Association of Commonwealth Universities there, bringing the universities uh, also on board. But also we do have also some uh, you know, experts as well um, you know, in the field, but also in terms of cooperation and you know, um, logistics and, and things like that. So it's kind of, it's, it's, I think it's a very good mix of partners on the, on the uh, project. And the context uh, uh, really, uh, it's, it's one you know, that emanates really from you know, the joint Africa-EU strategy, you know, which includes a partnership on science, information, society, and space, which was launched uh, in 2007. And under this joint Africa-EU uh, strategy, if you look at uh, what they call priority one, which talks about uh, you know, capacity building you know, for the implementation of uh, Africa's consolidated plan of action. Uh, one of the outcomes that are that stated you know, in that plan is to, you know, it's a vision really to see an improved you know, uh, pan-African infrastructure and facilities for R&D as well as the development of, you know, uh, evidence-based, you, know, uh, you know, policy making. And I think that is where, you know, we see this project, you know, talking to that, uh, you know, uh, outcome. Uh, as the NEPAC speaker has uh, alluded uh, uh, earlier on, that there is also a partnership on, on infrastructure, although it is more on roads and, 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 and water pipes and, 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 and things like that. You know, we are here to see a more sort of focused, you know, uh, approach on you know research infrastructure, and we hope that this uh, project will make some kind of recommendations uh, along that line. Uh, I'm not going to repeat, I think this uh, was shared also by the earlier speaker about the uh, science and technology plan for the continent and the uh, five cluster you know, uh, flagship programs uh, in biodiversity, energy, water, material sciences, IT, ICT, space science and mathematical sciences. Um, so really it's about uh, as I said earlier, creating a policy dialogue and a strong voice within the continent also on, on research, you know, uh, infrastructure. Even if, you know, it has to be some kind of a bottom-up, you know, uh, approach. And then in South Africa, of course, you are aware that, uh, you know, we are also looking at, you know, developing a national roadmap for research infrastructure. And the objectives of this project, uh, you know, is to really, uh, you know, promote this cooperation, you know, opportunities, and to explore, you know, uh, new opportunities. Um, you know, once we, you know, creating the community, the the, the networks, the partnership, and so forth, but also to you know, provide information, advisory and support services, you know, in this area. Um, as you will hear from the presentation on, on our early findings, we've also uh, tried to come up with a, you know, a definition for research infrastructure for this project. Uh, but of course, you know, looking at other definitions of research infrastructure, including that of, uh, you know, s -Fan. And And really the focus of this, uh, you know, project, or, or, or really some of the outcomes of the project at the end of the two years will be, you know, uh, some kind of an inventory, you know, database of where 
research infrastructures are located, you know, both uh, in Africa and, and Europe, and to you know, uh, come up with some recommendations on how to improve mutual access uh, to this uh, research infrastructure. And in the process, you know, I identify opportunities to improve, uh, you know, cooperation uh, in this area, and also influencing future activities and those of the next, you know, uh, framework, you know, programs uh, in this area. So, in terms of the project itself, um, amongst uh, those uh, consortium partners, uh, the Department of Science and Technology is the coordinator of the project. And it's really the first time that an FP7 project uh, of this kind is being coordinated outside of Europe. And, and therefore, I think we will be very pleased and, uh, you know, um, for this kind of gesture you know, from the European Com uh, Commission to also, you know, give the project coordination role uh, to also partners outside, you know, of, of, of Europe. Of course, it's a challenge and we an experience, you know, we're learning a lot, uh, you know, uh, through this. Of course, we do have an advisory board and uh, some of the advisory board members are here. Uh, Dr. Daniel Adams, who is facilitating this uh, session, is also one of the advisory board members. We also have Professor Kert at Lukal, uh, who is sitting uh, over there from Austria. I think he will also be part of the roundtable uh, discussion later, so we will introduce him. We are also expecting uh, Professor John Wood also to arrive uh, around lunchtime to join us. And, and and the other advisory members will not be here with us, but also the steering committee, which is really all the partners, uh, you know, together constitute the uh, also the governance of, of, of the project. And in terms of planned events, uh, this is really the first workshop. So we envisage to have four workshops in total in Africa and two in Europe, and then we will then have a major closing conference towards the end of the project to then come back and present to you, uh, you know, the final outcomes and uh, recommend, you know, recommendations of, of, uh, of the project. And uh, I haven't uh, told you yet about the work packages, uh, but you know, the idea is that, you know, also within the various uh, work packages of this project, you know, uh, there will be an expert consultation group uh, that we're going to establish so that whatever, you know, reports and recommendations, you know, are made can also be subjected thoroughly uh, to expert reviews. Uh, I think that is just in a nutshell a very quick sort of rundown of what the project, you know, is all about and what it hopes to achieve. Um, but, you know, the consortium partners are here and myself, so in between the breaks and during the day, so please feel free to ask, uh, you know, for more information. But we do have a, a website, uh, www.byrip.org, you know, where you can go in and, and familiarize yourself more uh, you know, with the project. Uh, so, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Kakarani. Um, that is, brings us to the last uh, presentation in the session. Uh, you'll notice now the uh, next point on the uh, program being uh, questions and answers uh, or to, uh, I mean, questions from your side and uh, hopefully there will be some answers from <laughs> the uh, members or the presenters. So um, we, according to my watch, now we 
about five minutes or so, uh, that we could uh, devote, uh, devote to questions that you may have based on the presentations that this was, uh, men were presented to you this, this morning. So uh, let us use the opportunity. There will be uh, one or two roaming mics that you could use, and we'll try to um, uh, record the, the questions and then ask the uh, appropriate uh, people to respond to that. So we have uh, Dr. Tambi and uh, Professor Leon, which uh, I think will, the question will be directed to them. Okay, so over to you now for, for questions. Maybe you want to uh, also for our uh, education here um, and just uh, maybe introduce yourself and your affiliation and uh, then your question. Uh, we'd like you to be brief and uh, probably uh, not have more than two questions. <laughs> Um, I'm Ineke Buskens. Uh, I am a European living in Africa since 1990. At the moment, I'm leading in a research network comprising uh, 21 teams in 14 countries in Africa and the Middle East. And um, what I want to share with you is not a question but a concern about what I find the absence of mentioning power relationships. What we have learned in our research in Africa and the Middle East is that the moment uh, you become gender blind, you become inevitably sexist. Why is that? Because gender blind actually means blind to gender power relationships, which have maybe become, you know, like taken for granted. We have learned that gender blind access to ICTs actually always favors males because of the, of the implicit gender power relationships. And I can just imagine that the same is going to happen with this program in Africa. Because there is a lot of implicit power relationships between Europe and Africa that have not, not been expressed. And having grown up in Europe, I know that most Europeans, even enthusiastic European scientists, are totally blind to power. It took my initiation in Africa as a research methodologist and a researcher to become aware of the way how, how power and knowledge are inextricably intertwined. So when you say like uh, global interest, I would ask the question, from what perspective? Uh, leading edge technology from what perspective? What Europe needs or what Africa needs? I know for instance that what Africa would need would be a lot of uh, leading edge research in sustainable energy developments, not in nuclear research. I think we have already one. A reactor sitting on a fault line in Milton, I don't think we need more of them. I think what Africa could contribute to the world and to Africa is sustainable alternative energy. Uh, but I know there are like trade interests in Europe that may influence the research agenda in Africa. So I'm just very, very concerned. Africa and Europe are my both loves. Like, you know, Josephine Baker used to say, uh, Mon pays et Paris. For me, it's Africa and Europe. But I, I will not stand by and, and see more abuse. Thank you. We will take um, uh, probably one or two of uh, the contribution of questions and then uh, respond to <coughs> Thank you very much. Hey, my name is Eric Monkey from the Ministry of Higher Education Science and Technology, and we are partnering this project. Hey, hey, just this. Mr. Takalani say one of the things we're supposed to do in the project is to look at which areas we can have cooperation between Africa and Europe and to, to support ongoing initiatives. So my question is to the person from Nepal. So they have all these programs on infrastructures going on. Are there any areas where there's cooperation with European countries uh, that they are supporting the Nepal programs? Because that's what we like to do. Within the Nepal programs, are there any areas you are cooperating with European countries to implement some of these initiatives? Because this is where we will have a dialogue with, with, with Pyre and of course with the African Union Commission. Uh, not, not necessarily on transport, any proposed program for infrastructure where we can fit in, in that cooperation or where you are getting funding to, to implement these programs through the African, uh, either European Union member states, not all the European Commission any cooperation activities or for funding. Thank you. Then of course, also for research. Not only funding, also for research. Um, let's take one more on the side. Yeah. Uh, 
Mike Makanga. I'm representing the European and Evolving Countries Clinical Trials Partnership. Um, first, I'd like to thank the chair and the presenters for the very uh, enlightening presentations. Um, my question goes to the last presenter, Mr. Kismani. Uh, you indicated that one of the objectives or one of the um, activities that you intend to um, explore is to um, have or build an inventory of the research infrastructure. Um, have you considered um, explore, I mean, contacting other initiatives that have done similar or related work in um, in getting an inv building inventory of research infrastructure um, in these areas. And two, um, one of the major bottlenecks uh, with inventories that have been put together in the past has been that by the time publications or reports come out, a lot has changed on the ground. Have you considered putting in place a system that is dynamic and built into it a dynamic system that is self-regulating and that can be quality controlled so that you can get timely information that is valid at the time in the air when you want to produce the reports? Thank you. All right. Could, could we, before we go to the next round of questions, probably spend, uh, respond to, to that. I think the, for me the, the first one uh, uh, was uh, more a, a concern expressed by, I think which is very valid, and uh, uh, the group probably have to take into account, uh, but with this, it's a very broad uh, I mean, uh, concern now, um, and uh, probably a real one. So I don't know if uh, any of the members at the table would like to take a, a step at that, or uh, should we note that as a uh, comment from the uh, Yes. Uh, I can comment um, about the concept of global interest uh, that uh, you have mentioned before. Um, when we speak about research infrastructure of global interest, it's in the sense of interest by scientific communities over the world. And we are speaking here about